Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Anne's as we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today we will be using the Mass of Renewal beginning with the Holy Ad number 878. Our gathering hymn is found at number 213, Holy, Holy, Holy. Please rise. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My friends, as we prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries of Jesus Christ, let us begin by calling to mind our sins, asking God for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Christ, have mercy. Christ, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. 
you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind with the same love, united at heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. So what do the following have in common? Bible studies, book studies, small group ministries, uh, marriage preparation, OCIA, where we bring new members into the church, uh, parenting, uh, Christian friendship. You know, what do they have in common? And, and perhaps, you know, there's lots of things that we can find in common about them. Uh, yet, uh, we get extra points today if, if we point out the fact that these are all forums uh, in which we can develop uh, some, somewhat of a long-term relationship with others, where we have the opportunity to share our faith and have an influence on them uh, and help others to grow deeper and deeper in their faith. You know, we, we all need these, these types of influences in our life where we share our faith with others. Uh, and we're able to learn from others. We're able to uh, be able to teach what we have learned as well, you know, all in a spirit of faithfulness to God and his son, Jesus. You know, when, when I was in seminary, you know, we were uh, warned uh, against uh, a certain mentality, a lone wolf mentality, to, to think that uh, we could do it on our own. You know, and uh, priests are not immune to this, as are uh, all of us as well. Uh, that sometimes we, we get into this mindset that we think that we can do it all on our own or we don't need help from others or that uh, it's not a good thing to be vulnerable or to be dependent on others uh, or to even be accountable to others. And yet there's great fruit that comes when we can put all of that to the side, begin to share our faith with others, begin even to guide others uh, in the faith. Uh, there's great joy in that. And great, great graces come uh, through those uh, relationships. Now, if you've been following along the last uh, number of weeks, then you know that we have been talking about the stages of discipleship. And each week builds upon the previous. Uh, three weeks ago, we, we talked about a stage known as the beginning disciple, uh, the person who, who knows that their life needs to change and they have looked to Jesus and have realized that they're going to give him a chance. And so their attitudes towards Jesus and the church now begin to change. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about the second stage known as the growing disciple. This is the person who now has taken that interior transformation, and now uh, it becomes manifest in changed behaviors uh, and words. Then last week, we hit the third stage known as the commissioned disciple. This is the person now uh, who takes everything that they have, have built up in faith through the grace of Jesus Christ, and they begin to share it with others, and they want others to experience the same transformation that they have received. Now, this week, we get to the fourth stage, which is a special stage known as the disciple maker. And this is the person uh, who is now intentionally walking with other people. You know, not just in a general sort of way, but uh, they are focusing their energies and efforts on perhaps just a small number. You know, even just two or three people that they can pour into share their faith intentionally, enter into a deep relationship with them so that they can be built up in the faith. There's a lot of fruit that comes from this. 
Now, the disciple maker, that we, we talk about three different markers uh, that make up uh, the disciple maker. Uh, the first uh, is that this person is one who has led someone to commit to Jesus Christ and his church and to the mission that he has given to us. The works of evangelization, sharing the faith. The work of disciple making, helping others to come to Christ. The work of Christian friendship. You know, this is the one uh, who has an intentionally uh, set out uh, to, to help this person or this small number of people to grow in the faith. And they might do this through any number of means, uh, but it's all through somewhat of like a, a mentoring relationship. Uh, in, in the church, when we talk about this, we talk about them discipling other individuals. So we can use that word disciple as a, as a verb as well. So you can disciple other people. Uh, and, and there's a beautiful organization that, that I have found that does this you know, better than probably any others that I have seen. Uh, and we heard about this just a few weeks ago when uh, one of our parishioners came up and talked about uh, campus ministry. Uh, and she mentioned a group called FOCUS, which is the Fellowship of Catholic University Students. Uh, and this is a, a, wonderful, a wonderful organization where missionaries, just three or four of them, go onto campuses of thousands of students. And they will do this, this act of disciple making. And uh, they may only each take about three or four students to themselves, but they will invest their energies in these individuals. And they will grow them into really strong disciples of Christ who are then ready to go out and do the same. This is what it means to disciple another and to pour them out, pour yourself out for them. The, the second uh, marker of a disciple maker is that this person has now developed a heart for God's people, so much so that they're now willing to make sacrifices, uh, any sacrifice that's necessary in order to help them to grow in the faith, uh, even if it means changing their schedule a little bit. You know, when you invest in another person, you love them so much that if they should come up with a crisis in their life, you're going to drop everything uh, and run to them and help them through that. It's that kind of love of Christ uh, that has taken over the heart of the disciple maker. The third uh, marker uh, of the Christian, dis uh, of, the, of the disciple maker uh, is, is one who's, who now makes their life decisions based upon how best to fulfill the call that Jesus gives to go out and make disciples. And, and this, you know, I think can be a little, a little confusing because we think, well, the best way to, to make disciples is to work for the church uh, or to become a nun or a priest or a deacon or, or such. And that might be the call for some but we have to discern that in our own individual lives. How is God calling me in my state of life as a husband or a wife or a father or a mother or a single person, uh, a young person, an older person? How has he called me to go out and do this work? And, and sometimes uh, it's as simple as saying, I, I need to look at my life and I need to make sure that the example of my life is such that when people look at me and they get to know me, that they're going to see Jesus Christ. And, and, you know, sometimes this means that we have to begin to weigh our options in life and we have to be able, ready to say no to certain things in life that are not bringing me closer to Christ and are not helping me to bring others to Christ. So perhaps, you know, for example, it might be a, a case when we're trying to decide on a career and we have a few options laid before us. Uh, and we know that perhaps a one really lucrative career maybe has really unethical practices. And as much as we might want the material benefits of that, maybe we have to say, this is not going to help me to bring others to Christ. They're going to look at my life knowing these practices, and they're going to think me a hypocrite. So I need to say no to that and go a different direction. Maybe it's in saying no or distancing myself from certain relationships, uh, people in my life who try to take me down a wrong road, who try to influence me in the wrong way. Maybe their lifestyle is such uh, that they are steeped in, in habits and vices that they're trying to pull me into. And I need to say no. I need to distance myself from that person because that's a bad influence. They're not bringing me closer to Christ and they're not going to help me to bring others to Jesus. You know, any of these life decisions, we have to begin to look at it through the lens of a disciple, a follower of Jesus. You know, uh, you, know you look at the, the scriptures today, and we see some uh, examples of how important it is uh, to be a disciple maker. Uh, the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel talks about the dangers uh, for the person who doesn't know, you know what is good and what is bad. 
So the person who, uh, it says, the person who, who persists in a life of, of vice, you know, will reap the consequences of that in eternity. Yet the person who turns away from vice and, and practices virtue is going to reap the rewards. But a person like that, they need someone to help them, to help them to see the light, to help them to see the truth and the grace of Jesus Christ. So they need people in their life that are going to accompany who are going to help them to know the truth. And if no one is there, they will never know. You know, we hear in, in St. Paul's letter to the Philippians today, you know, he, he says uh, that uh, we should uh, look out for the interest of others. Almost to the point he says, you know, uh, their interests of others should be more important than our own. To have a heart so much for them that we're willing to give ourselves completely for them and for what is for their good. He says that we should strive to be united in mind and heart, much like uh, the very mind and heart of Jesus himself. And that is accomplished best in these relationships. A relationship where we pour ourselves out for the other. And of course, St. Paul points to Jesus as the perfect example of this. Uh, He who on the cross poured himself out completely for each of us. Perfect example of someone uh, who loves us and wants to be in deep, abiding relationship with each and every one of us. Now, of course, you know, as we think about this stage, being a disciple maker, it's, it's very intimidating for some of us. Uh, And and I don't doubt that. It's intimidating uh, for me as well at times. And we might come up with all these sorts of objections. We might say, well, uh, what what Christ calls us to is to focus on just these these two or three of this handful of people in my life. But but I have this aspiration. I have this dream of making the biggest impact upon the world possible. I want to touch thousands of souls. But, you know, we have to consider, you know, we can throw our energy into those few and really make a difference in their lives. Or we can throw our energy and spread it out upon many, 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 and only make a little bit of impact on their lives. And we have to say, which is gonna be the bigger impact? I, I'm reminded of a familiar story that, that some of us may know about the starfish uh, being washed up on, uh, from the sea. And an old man walks along the, the shore and he sees a young boy there and he's, he's, he's uh, mired in all of these starfish on the, sh- on the sand and he's pouring, these, this boy is pour, uh, throwing these starfish back into the sea to save them. And the man looks at all of these and he, he says, my son, what, what, what is this, what's going on? You'll never make a difference. It doesn't matter if you're trying to just, you know, throw one into the sea. You'll never reach all of them. It doesn't matter. And, and the little boy, he picks up the one starfish and he looks at it and he looks at the man and he throws it back in the sea and he says, it mattered to that one. And I think that speaks so, so uh, perfectly uh, to what a disciple maker does. That they are willing to, to put their effort into this one, to pull them out of the muck and the dirt of life and save them through the grace of Jesus Christ. Rather, Jesus saves them. But they need someone to help them, someone to accompany them, someone to pour themselves out for their sake. You know, the, the other objection you know, that is possible for us to make is to say, well, you know, what, 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 if, what if I were to invest all of my time and my energy in these two or three people, and what if they don't come to faith in the end? Haven't I just wasted my time? You know, and I think that's a really real and valid fear for any of us. But, but I don't think that we would be alone uh, in that. And I think the reality is that we may not uh, experience that kind of success, even if we pour out everything for another. You know, you look at the gospel today, and, and the, the father that they, talk, they talked about had two sons, and, and a, a parent is in that perfect op, uh, situation to be able to influence their children uh, in the best possible way. And yet, even, even so, with those two sons, one chose a life of virtue and one chose vice. So it's a reality that, that it requires the response of the other. It doesn't stop us from pouring into them, though. We need to be faithful to them faithful to the call of God. You look at the life of Jesus. You know, among all of those who followed him, Jesus, of course, poured himself out into everyone, but he particularly chose these 12, the apostles. 
And he poured himself completely out in them. He invested his very life in them and took them aside and, and uh, expounded upon the mysteries of the kingdom. And yet even so among those 12, there was still one who betrayed him, Judas. So the reality is that the fruits may not be perfect, but it doesn't stop us from being faithful. You know, the fact of the matter is that the hearts of human beings are, are very fragile, and they're very tentative at times, and, and they need someone strong in their faith to accompany them and walk by, walk by their side through this life, to encourage them at times through all the ups and downs of their faith. When they stumble, they need someone that's going to uh, correct them and get them back on track. When they are uh, on, on a good path and everything is going well, they need someone that's going to celebrate with them. But this is the work of the disciple maker, to be in the long term for these individuals, to show them the very heart of Jesus Christ who poured himself out for us. And what we're going to find is, as we, we finish up our series next week is that we're, today we are laying the foundation uh, for what is setting the stage to truly change the world. And, and I'm not speaking in uh, uh, exaggerations here when I say that. But if we can get to this stage where we truly become disciple makers, we can change the world. And it's an exciting journey. It's exciting to know what the grace of Christ is going to do within us. Uh, but each and every day, uh, we work upon uh, all of those previous stages to get us to a point where we're ready to give ourselves to another. It's the very heart of Jesus poured out for love of the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my friends, let us turn to our Father in heaven as we lay before him all of our needs and petitions. For Pope Francis, our bishops, all priests and deacons, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith, may their faithful witness to Jesus Christ inspire all to seek him more sincerely. We pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase in the Eucharistic life in our parish, that we may come to understand the gift that is the bread of life come down from heaven and receive him with faith and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord for farmers, as they work throughout this harvest season, may they remain safe in the fields and reap an abundant crop. We pray to the Lord. Lord For our parish and school community of St. Anne, may the gospel be an encouragement and a challenge to humbly serve others as Christ loved his church. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the personal intentions we hold in our hearts, may we confidently place them before the Lord trusting in his mercy and goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Bob and Irene Casey, 
May they know the mercy of God and rise with him to new and eternal life. We pray to the Lord. God, Almighty Father in heaven, we turn to you in humble, confident faith that you hear and answer all of our prayers. Accept all of these needs that we lay at your feet this day and answer them all in accord with your most holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, any little ones among us who have an offering to make, you are invited to come forward to place it in the basket at the foot of the altar. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, number 485, God is Love. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The 
grant us, O merciful God, that this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he, gave us, he, gave, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anne and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, his assistants, Joseph and Michael, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I mentioned uh, today as I spoke a little bit uh, in passing about our small group uh, ministry, which is starting up this Lent. Uh, we have begun our small group leader formation series uh, this last Sunday. Uh, we began with 23 participants uh, and, uh, and some that weren't able to make it the first week. Um, we do meet on Sunday evenings from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at St. Anne's School Library uh, from the current date through November 5th. Uh, if you're, it's not too late to, to join us uh, for that formation series if you're interested. Uh, you'll learn more about the model of small group ministry that we'll be implementing here this winter and be equipped with the knowledge and the confidence you need uh, to perhaps facilitate a small group if you discern that as God's call for you. Uh, if, you know, if you are interested uh, in signing up, there is still a sign-up sheet in the back of church today on the table. Uh, we'll also have extra materials available uh, if you just show up tomorrow evening. Again, uh, that's Sundays, 6.30 to 8.30 at St. Anne's School Library. Uh, also, please note that in the, uh, on the in entrance today, as you go out on the right, there's a table for St. Anne's annual gala event taking place Friday, October 27th at the Scenic, Scenic Escape Barn. Uh, there'll be dinner, music, dancing, silent auction items, and a lot of fun. Uh, only a handful of tables remain, uh, along with all, all those individual seats. Uh, so if you're interested, you can pick up a, uh, a flyer that has all the information that you need. Uh, you can contact us uh, at the parish office to sign up, or you can contact one of the gala committee members. Uh, so all of that information on the table in the back today. Uh, we'd like to uh, offer our condolences today to a longtime member of St. Anne's who, who passed away this uh, last week out in Winstead, Minnesota. Uh, Dolores Roofs passed away. Some of you may know her. Uh, she was 101, just turned 101. Uh, her visitation will take place this Tuesday, October 3rd, from 4, 4 to 7 p.m., and that's at the Chilson Funeral Home in Winstead. Uh, her funeral mass will take place on Wednesday, October 4th, at 1 p.m. Uh, at Holy Trinity Church in Winstead. Uh, if you're interested in uh, that information, it is on the, the Chilson Funeral Home website uh, out of Winstead, uh, so you can check that out. Uh, but we wanted to pass that along uh, in case uh, any of you knew her well. So as we conclude, then let us offer our prayer to the Blessed Virgin. We, we pray for the repose of Dolores' soul and the comfort of her loved ones as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. And as we go forth, please join in our closing hymn, number 381, sent forth by God's blessing.